What's up besties? Today we're going to be talking about the T's version 7 reading and we're going to be starting with topic, main idea, and supporting details. Let's get started. So first up we have topic sentences. These are usually the first sentence of every paragraph. So here's the key point. You can often answer many of these exam questions just by reading that topic sentence. The rest is just elaboration, so pay attention to the supporting details if they're needed. So say for example, if you have a question that's asking you about supporting details, you wanna read that paragraph with the topic sentence first, and then choose the answer that's gonna best fit what is that topic. So we're gonna be doing this in practice to tie this all together, but just kind of get that idea in the back of your head. Next we have main idea. So the main idea is essentially the thesis statement. Think of it as the core message that the paragraph is trying to convey. Often you're gonna find this as the last sentence in that first paragraph. So if you have a question that asks you about main idea of a passage, quickly check that last sentence of that first paragraph and mark your answer and move on. We don't have a whole lot of time on the reading section, so usually with these kind of sentence, these kind of questions, you're going to be able to answer them pretty quickly if you know where to find them. Next up, we have supporting details. We kind of talked about that one a little bit. That's that supporting details being the bulk of the paragraph, and it's gonna make up the details that support that topic sentence that you're gonna find in the first sentence of every paragraph. And then lastly, we have summary. So with summary, you're gonna to wanna to think of like back in school when you summarize essays for particular classes, right? You're gonna use that same knowledge that you gained back then to write a conclusion or a restatement of that thesis. So similarly, a passage's summary is typically the last paragraph's first sentence. That is where it's gonna be found on the T's exam. If there's any questions about the passage's summary, go straight to that sentence, choose your answer, and keep it moving. Let's take a look at some practice questions to help us tie this all together. So just to kind of give you a quick overview of what you're looking at, I've highlighted what is a topic sentence, main idea, and supporting details within the paragraph. So starting up here at the top in the red, we have our topic sentence. That is incorporating a well-balanced diet is key to maintaining overall health and wellness. Then we have our supporting details. That's everything that's in here in the blue. This is everything that's going to build up that topic sentence. So a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins provides essential nutrients that the body needs to function effectively. These foods can lower the risk of chronic illness such as heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. Furthermore, a balanced diet supports immune system health and aids in weight management. And then our last sentence down here in purple, that is our main idea. So it's bringing together everything we just kind of talked about. Therefore, making a conscious food choices is a fundamental step towards a healthier, more vibrant life. So this is what it's going to look like when you're taking the teas. This is how you're gonna break it down. So I always highly recommend that when you are looking at your paragraph, read the question first, and then dive in to see specifically what it is asking and look for those particular sentences. So like I just said before, these are important tips that you're gonna to want to remember when you are taking your T's exam specifically for reading. Number one, you want to read the question first. This is the most crucial part of the test and you wanna make sure you're doing this. Read the question carefully and completely before anything else. Don't waste your time reading the passage first, then reading the question and having to go back. It's just unnecessary. Sometimes reading the passage, like I said, is unnecessary and the answer can be found in the question itself. So for example, identifying opinions in a statement. You're gonna to wanna to look for words like should, good, best, or most. That's gonna help you kind of break down the questions and you might not even have to read the passage at all. Avoid starting with longer passages. Some T's test takers even like to take notes. So I know that when I took my T's, I was taking notes about this is the topic sentence, this is supporting details, this is main idea. You're not gonna have a whole lot of time for that. It's great if you do that because when you go to nursing school, you're gonna have to take notes like that, but specifically for the T's, answer the question and move on. Tip number two is don't leave questions blank. In the T's, this test is timed, and it's important that you manage that time effectively. So for your initial approach, you're gonna to wanna to answer each question first when you encounter it, because you might not have time to go back. 
Um, strategic guessing is also really good. If you're uncertain about an answer, it's better to make an educated guess initially rather than leaving it blank and considering you know, it later when it comes to your time constraints, you might not be able to go back. And then lastly, we have narrowing down. This is a great method. So it's the elimination method where you're gonna reduce your choices. So it's gonna increase your odds of answering the question correctly, and it's gonna give you a 50% chance of getting it right. So let's take a look at our first practice question. As I said, read the question first. So the question is, which sentence in the paragraph best serves as the topic sentence? So remember, topic sentence is usually the first sentence in the first paragraph. So I'm gonna read the entire thing, just so that you have it, but we're gonna be looking at that first sentence. So advancements in renewable energy technologies have become crucial in combating climate change. Solar and wind power in particular has been significant developments in efficiency and affordability. Governments and private sectors are increasing investing in these technologies, recognizing their long-term benefits for the environment and economy. Such investments can only reduce carbon emissions, but also create job opportunities in new industries. The shift towards renewable energy sources is therefore not only an environmental imperative, but also an economic opportunity. So again, what is our first sentence? Advancements in renewable energy technologies have become crucial in combating climate change. So as we take a look at our answers here, does there anything that states that topic sentence that we just read. Let me see, solar and wind power in particular have been seeing significant developments in efficiency and affordability. Nope, that's not it. Advancements in renewable energy technologies have become crucial in combating climate change. Yep, that's just what we talked about. Governments and private sectors are increasing investing in these technologies. Nope, and the shift towards renewable energy sources is therefore not only an environmental imperative, imperative, but also an economic opportunity. We know that's the main idea because that was actually the last sentence of that paragraph. So you've guessed it, you're correct. The correct answer is B. Advancements in renewable energy technologies have become crucial in combating climate change. You see how much time we would have wasted had we read the entire thing? We just read that first sentence, there it is, that is our topic sentence. Let's take a look at our next practice question. So again, we want to read the question first. What is the main idea of the paragraph? So we know main idea, we're looking at the last sentence of that paragraph. So going back, let's take a look. The last sentence is, therefore, while AI brings significant advancements and convenience, it also necessitates careful considerations of its broader societal implications. So going back to our question, we have AI is significantly improving efficiency in various industries. That's not correct. Ethical concerns are a minor part of AI development. No, that's not what our main idea stated. AI role in transportation and medical diagnostics is revolutionary. No, and AI brings significant advancements in convenience. It also necessitates careful consideration of its broader societal implications. Yes, D is our correct answer. Remember, when we're looking at main idea, we're particularly looking at the last sentence in the first paragraph. Look how much time we saved. Let's take a look at our next practice question. Again, we want to read the question first. Which of the following is a supporting detail found in the paragraph? So again, we're looking at that bulk of the paragraph. So we're gonna to have to pay a little bit more attention to this question. Our first sentence is our topic sentence. The study of astrophysics has led to remarkable discoveries about the universe. So that is the topic. That's what we're gonna be talking about. Everything below here is our supporting details. It has revealed the existence of black holes, massive celestial entities with gravitational poles, so strong that not even light can escape them. Additionally, through astrophysics, scientists have been able to estimate the age of the universe, providing insights into the Big Bang Theory. This field also contributes to the identification of numerous exoplanets, increasing our understanding of potentially life-sustaining planets beyond our solar system. So all of that is our bulk of our supporting details. And then our last sentence is our main idea. Thus, astrophysics continues to expand our knowledge and challenge our understanding of the cosmos. So back to our question, looking at our choices, astrophysics has been instrumental in discovering the speed of light. 
No, we didn't really talk about that. The existence of black holes have been revealed through the study of astrophysics. Yes, that's absolutely something that we talked about. Astrophysics has disproved many traditional theories about the solar system. We can automatically eliminate that. And the study of astrophysics has led to the development of advanced space travel technologies. So based on all of the answers that we have here, we have B being the correct answer. B was something that was specifically stated within the text. And as we talked about before, when we're identifying supporting details, we're going to find them in the same sentence as our topic sentence, and it's gonna make up a bulk of the paragraph. Let's take a look at our final question when it comes to this section. Again, we're gonna read the question first. Which sentence best summarizes the content of the second paragraph? So we're looking at summary here. So let's take a look at our actual passage. So again, the question is specifically asking about the summary of the second paragraph. So we don't really need to waste our time on that first paragraph. Don't even bother. So as we know with summary, summary is gonna be that first sentence of our last paragraph. It's gonna surmise everything that we had talked about. So our first sentence states, efforts to mitigate climate change are diverse and include both global and local strategies. So let's go back to our question and see if we have an answer that talks about that. So climate change has far reaching impacts on the environment and human societies, nope. Efforts to mitigate climate change are diverse and include both global and local strategies. We just literally talked about that, so we know that that is most likely our correct answer, but let's take a look at our last options. Rising global temperatures lead to more frequent and severe weather events, and international agreements aim to reduce carbon emissions and limit global warming. So we know that those are not the correct answers. Based on what we read, we know that the correct answer is going to be B. Efforts to mitigate climate change are diverse and include both global and local strategies. So again, just a reminder, when we're identifying summary, we're looking at the first sentence of the last paragraph. Next, we're gonna talk about making inferences and logical conclusions. So an inference in drawing a logical conclusion is essentially a conclusion drawn by combining evidence and logical reasoning. Both of these terms are considered the same when you are taking your T's. So in our daily lives, we often unconsciously infer things using cues in our environment to understand various situations. So for instance, you might deduce that a baby is hungry if they are crying, or someone is, was likely speeding if they were pulled over by the police. All of that is based on observations as well as the knowledge that we have. How can we apply that skill and that knowledge with making inferences when it comes to reading? So initially what we wanna do is we wanna focus on identifying clues, which is the context of our reading. It's gonna present within the text as evidence to help us draw our conclusion. Next, we're gonna merge these clues with our existing knowledge of what we have previously learned through real world situations. And then the final steps involve synthesizing and formatting that information in order to come up with an idea or an inference. So let's take a look at some examples. Let's take a look at our first practice question. Again, we want to read the question first. Based on the paragraph, what can be inferred about Dr. Baker's perspective on dolphins? So let's read our passage. So Dr. Baker, a renowned marine biologist, has spent the last decade studying the behavioral patterns of dolphins in the wild. Her research conducted off the coast of Hawaii has shown that these intelligent creatures have complex social structures and communication methods. Dr. Baker's observations reveal that dolphins often work together to hunt and protect each other from predators. She has also noted instances of dolphins exhibiting what appears to be playful behavior, engaging with each other and even humans. So let's go back and take a look at our options. So what can we infer based on that passage? She believes that dolphins are solitary creatures. We know that that's not correct. They usually hunt and play within groups. She finds dolphins behavior to be relatively simple. No, nope. we know that she finds it to be complex. She considers dolphins to be highly intelligent and social animals. Absolutely, that's something that she talked about. And she thinks dolphins cannot interact well with humans. Well, as we know, 
she stated that dolphins can. So the best choice when it comes to this particular question is going to be C. She considers dolphins to be highly intelligent and social animals. And again, remember when we're looking at inferences and conclusions, we're drawing them based on the evidence and the reasoning that's found within the text and our prior knowledge. Let's take a look at another example. So our question states, what logical conclusion can be drawn about the future trend of vehicle purchases? So going back to our passage, let's go ahead and read that. In recent years, there's been significant increase in the number of electrical vehicles, EVs, on the road. Automotive manufacturers are investing heavily in EV technology, leading to improvements in battery life and vehicle range. Governments around the world are also supporting this shift with incentives for EV buyers, such as tax rebates and grants. Additionally, public charging infrastructures is becoming more widespread, making it more convenient for EV owners to charge their vehicles. So going back to our question, what can we draw a conclusion based on that paragraph? Is it A, the number of traditional gasoline vehicles are rapidly increasing, B, electric vehicles will become less popular due to high costs, C, electric vehicles are likely to become more prevalent in the automotive market, or D, government incentives for EVs will soon be discontinued. Well, this is a very positive article in regards to the implementation of EV vehicles. So we know that we can automatically eliminate D and we know we can automatically eliminate A because we don't really talk about traditional gasoline vehicles. So electric vehicles will become less popular due to high costs. That's not really something that we talked about, but C is. So electric vehicles are likely to become more prevalent in the automotive market, making C the correct answer for this question. Next, let's talk about explicit and implicit evidence. So when we think of explicit evidence, we think of E for expressed, because explicit evidence is straightforward and it directly is stated in the text. It leaves no room for doubt or interpretation. It's like a direct statement or clear facts. So for instance, consider a sign that reads wet paint. This is an explicit indication that the sign directly informs you that the paint is wet, leaving no room for guesswork, right? So remember, E stands for explicit and expressed. And next we have implicit evidence. So that's our I, the I stands for implied. So when it comes to implied evidence, it's more subtle and it's not directly stated. So instead it's hinted at or it's kind of suggested, requiring you to read between the lines or infer what the meaning is. So an example of this would be seeing a bench that looks like it has paint on it and there's a can and a brush beside it, but there's no sign. There's no explicit statement stating that the bench is wet, but you can infer, right, or imply that it is wet based on the context and the surrounding clues around that bench. So keep in mind when we're thinking about implicit, that I stands for implicit or implied. Let's take a look at some examples of how this is used on the T's. So let's read our question first. Which statement is an example of explicit evidence from the paragraph? So remember, this is gonna be specifically stated in the paragraph. We're not going to have to draw a conclusion or imply what it is. So during a recent lecture on public health, Professor Jenkins discovered the, I'm sorry, discussed the impact of poor air quality on respiratory health. She cited a study that found a significant increase in asthma cases in cities with high levels of air pollution. Professor Jenkins also mentioned that children and the elderly are particularly vulnerable to these effects. She concluded the lecture by emphasizing the need for stricter air quality regulations to protect public health. So let's take a look at our examples. Air pollution might cause discomfort in some people. We didn't really talk about that. That might be just more implied. Asthma cases increase in cities with high levels of air pollution. Absolutely, that was stated inside the text. But let's take a look at our final two options. All urban areas have poor air quality. Again, that's not something that we talked about. And air quality regulations are universally strict. Again, not something discussed. So the correct answer for this particular example is going to be B, asthma cases increase in cities with high levels of air pollution.
Our next practice question states, what can be implicitly inferred about the protagonist's view on social media? So again, this isn't going to be directly stated within the text. It's going to be implicit, meaning that it's going to be implied. So we're going to have to draw a logical conclusion about what it is that the author is trying to convey when it comes to social media. So the passage is, in her last novel, author Emily Carter explores themes of isolation and connection in a digital age. The protagonist, a young blogger, struggles with feelings of loneliness despite her large online following. Throughout the story, she navigates the complexities of forming genuine relationships in a world dominated by social media. The novel ends with the protagonist finding solace in a small community of like-minded individuals away from the digital realm. So let's take a look at our examples. She believes social media is the best way to form relationships. Well, we know that's not true because she talks about the feelings of loneliness when it comes to social media. B, she finds greater fulfillment in in-person interactions than online. Well, we can kind of imply that based on the last sentence, right? The novel ends with the protagonist finding solace in a small community of like-minded individuals away from the digital realm. But let's take a look at our final two options. She thinks social media should be avoided at all costs. That's not really something that she talks about, right? And then lastly, she uses social media to increase her popularity. Well, we know that's not true, <laughs> uh, just simply based on the fact that she talks about her feelings of loneliness. So out of all of the options that we have, the most correct answer is going to be B. She finds greater fulfillment in in-person interactions than online. In the last section of this video, we're going to be talking about comprehension of written directions, starting with transition words and phrases for order and relationship. So a memory trick when it comes to this particular part of the test, transition words can be found at the beginning of a sentence and are usually followed by a comma. There's four key types. We have emphasis, addition, contrast, and order. So starting with emphasis, we have words that we use to highlight something important. Examples of this can be indeed, in fact, most importantly, but I also included additional uh, words that you might want to be on the lookout. So please feel free to take a screenshot of this particular slide. Next, we have addition. So when we talk about addition, these are transition words that are used to want to add more information to a text. So commonly, you're going to see examples of words like furthermore, additionally, and also. Next, we have contrast. So contrast words are used when showing differences or opposing ideas. So think of them as like two different sides of a coin, right? Examples of this can be however, on the other hand, nevertheless. And then lastly, we have order. So with order, these transition words are used as a sequence of ideas or events. And these are ones that we know very well. They're examples of like firstly, subsequently, finally, next those kinds of words. Let's take a look at some practice test examples of each one of these different kinds of transition words. So taking a look at our first example, the question reads, what transition word in the paragraph is used to emphasize cr a crucial point? So let's take a look. Remember, we're looking for a word with a comma behind it, key tip. So nutrition plays a key role in maintaining good health. Importantly, that's our first word with a comma behind it. A balanced diet provides the body with essential nutrients. This includes vitamins and minerals that support various bodily functions. Regular consumption of fruits and vegetables, for instance, have been linked to the reduced risk of many chronic diseases. So let's take a look at our choices. We have regularly, includes, importantly, and for instance. Well, based on the paragraph that we had, the only uh, transition word that we had was importantly. So we can deduce that the correct answer is going to be C, importantly. Our next example, which transition word in the paragraph indicates the addition of information? Remember, we're looking for those addition words. So global warming is a major environmental concern. It leads to rising sea levels and increased temperatures. Furthermore, it contributes to these frequent and severe weather events like hurricanes and droughts. These changes are, have significant impacts on ecosystems and human societies. So we have leads, furthermore, like, and these. Based on our paragraph here, we have furthermore with a comma behind it. That is the only transition word that we have in this paragraph. 
So worst case scenario, if you were unable to figure out, oh, I can't remember what the addition word is, look for those words at the beginning of a sentence with a comma behind it. So based on all the choices that we have, the correct answer is going to be B. Furthermore, that is our addition transition word. Our next example, the question reads, which transition word in the paragraph introduces a contrasting idea? Remember, that's that both sides of the coin kind of contrast uh, transition word. So taking a look at our paragraph, exercise is known to be beneficial for health. Alternatively, comma, there's our transition word, a sedentary lifestyle is associated with various health risks, including obesity and heart disease. The contrast between an active or a sedentary lifestyle highlights the importance of regular physical activity for maintaining good health. So let's take a look at our options. No, that's not a transition word, right? Alternatively, absolutely. Including, that's usually like an addition, right? And then highlights, no. So based on all of the options that we have here, the best option is going to be B, alternatively. Let's take a closer look at our final question. So which transition word in the paragraph is used to indicate the next sequence of events? So we're looking for something that is related to next, okay, when it comes to transition words. So let's take a look at our paragraph. In the process of photosynthesis, plants convert sunlight into energy. First, comma, so here's our first transition word. They absorb sunlight using chlorophyll in their leaves. Second, comma, they use this energy to convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen. This process is essential for the growth of plants and for producing oxygen in the environment. So again, the question states, which transition word in the paragraph is used to indicate the next sequence of events? So we have convert, we know that's not right. First is definitely one of our order transition words. Second, again, another one of our order transition words, and essential. So remember, this is when you really need to read that question. It's indicating the next sequence of events. So while first is a transition word, the correct answer is actually C. C is second, that is our second sentence. Second, we use energy to convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen. That is indicating our next sequence of events when we're looking at an order of events. Now that we've become very familiar with transition words with order, we have priorities and direction. They're kind of like the same thing. You're looking for those transition words. So you're gonna be provided with a list with bullets or a number priority. So you're gonna look for words like first, second, third, fourth, or you can even be looking for things like first, additionally, next, and finally. So let's take a look at our example. I have highlighted those words for you. As a nursing student, Sarah has developed a structured approach to manage her study sessions effectively. First, there's our first word, she reviews her lecture notes to reinforce the material covered in class. Next, there's our second one, she tackles practice questions related to these topics to enhance her understanding and application skills. Additionally, there's our third one, Sarah allocates time to participate in study groups where she discusses complex concepts with her peers. Finally, there's our last one. She indicates the last part of her study session by reviewing difficult topics and showing the comprehensive grasp of materials before her exams. Let's take a look at some practice questions so we can kind of grasp what we're looking for when it comes to priorities and directions. Taking a look at our practice question, according to Julia's study plan, which two activities are planned to be done together? Remember, we're looking for those addition transition words to combine two topics together. So taking a look at our paragraph, to prepare for the upcoming nursing certification exam, Julia outlined a detailed study plan. First, she decided to review all of her class notes to refresh her fundamental knowledge. Second, she planned to take several additional tests to identify areas where she needed more focus. Additionally, during this phase, Julia intended to join online forums and discussion groups to gain deeper insight into challenging topics. And finally, she would dedicate the last week before the exam to revising her weakest subjects, ensuring thorough preparation. So let's take a look at our options here. So we already found our transition word. Did you find it? Yes, it's additionally. So those are the two topics that we're combining together. 
First, we have reviewing class notes and taking practice tests. Well, that was our first one, and our second one, those we were not combining together, right? First, second, that's our sequence of events. B, joining online forums and revising weakest subjects. Again, that was our third to last and our last. We're not combining those together because we have that transition word in between finally, so that separates them. Taking practice tests and joining online forums. Yep. That's in between our transition word additionally. So those two things would be what we're combining together, but let's look at our final option. Refreshing fundamental knowledge and revising weakest subjects. Again, that is the last sentence of our paragraph. It's not combining anything. So based on all of the options that we have available to us, the correct answer is going to be C. Taking practice tests and joining online forums. Let's take a look at our final section for this video, and that is missing information and contraindications. So when we're looking at these questions, we wanna scan for gaps in statements that contradict against actions. So for missing information, we wanna make sure that we're skimming the passage to grasp the main idea. Remember, that's the last sentence of our first paragraph. We wanna identify what specific information the question is trying to seek, and lastly, we wanna look for gaps in that explanation. When it comes to contraindications, we're, we really need to understand what it is that the text is trying to convey. Is it medical? Is it mechanical? What is it trying to tell us? We wanna identify any mentioned conditions, situations, or factors that we're gonna see in the text. And then lastly, we wanna look for statements that advise against certain actions. So let's take a look at some practice questions so we can tie this all together. So starting with our question first, we have what crucial aspect of heart health maintenance is missing from Dr. Ellis's seminar? Looking at our passage, we have in a recent public health seminar, Dr. Ellis discussed the impact of lifestyle choices on heart health. She covered the benefits of regular exercise and a balanced diet. However, during her talk, she realized that she hadn't addressed the crucial aspect of heart health maintenance. Despite this omission, she emphasized the importance of avoiding smoking and reducing stress. So taking a look at our examples, we have the importance of regular exercise. Well, she did talk about the benefits of regular exercise, so we can get rid of that option. The benefits of a balanced diet. Again, she did cover that topic, so we can automatically eliminate that. We have the role of medication and heart health. That wasn't really something that she discussed, so we can keep that one on the back burner. And then lastly, D, the importance of avoiding smoking. Well, based on our very last sentence, our main idea, she did emphasize the importance of avoiding smoking. So based on all of the options that we have available to us, the correct answer is going to be C, the role of medications and heart health. Taking a look at our next question, we have, what contraindication does Dr. Nguyen advise against for her patient? So we're looking for something that Dr. Nguyen says, do not do this. So let's take a look at our example. During a consultation, Dr. Nguyen advised her patient who has a history of chronic kidney disease about managing hypertension. She prescribed a specific blood pressure medication but cautious, cautioned against, that's that word we're looking for, against the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, also known as NSAIDs, for pain relief, noting their potential for worsening kidney function. So let's take a look at our question examples. So we have A, taking prescribed blood pressure medication. Well, that's something that she did advise to do, right? Engaging in high intensity exercise. Well, that wasn't something we talked about at all in this paragraph, so we can eliminate that. Consuming a high protein diet. Again, didn't really discuss diet, we're more focused on medications. And then lastly, using non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, also known as NSAIDs. She did caution against using these drugs for pain relief because they can worsen kidney function. So based on all of the options that we have available to us, the correct answer is going to be D, using non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. I hope that this information was helpful in understanding the reading portion of the ATITs. As always, if you have any questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Make sure you head over to Nurse Chung's store where there's a bunch of additional information as well as resources that are available to you. And as always, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.